my worst moment was when we were discovered in the bunker in Warsaw Ghetto when the uprising started on the 9th of April. We were there three and a half weeks in the bunker. I knew that we were going to die because we knew that, that, that all the Jews in Warsaw Ghetto were going to be taken to Treblinka and going to be murdered. And then we were chased to the wagons and my father was like an angel. He pushed us to the little window with a barbed wire so we could breathe because they put so many people in that some people actually on the, on the journey died from suffocation. When we were chased into the barrack and told to undress naked and my father was undressed and then we were running naked with our hands in the air. My father was running in front. My father told me that if I'm asked, and this was before, uh, I should say I'm six years older. I was a head taller than my twin sister. So I, was, I could actually pass for 16. I was 11, but I could pass for 16. And there was a man with a white coat with a little stick and he would put, change people right, left, right, left, right, left. And he pushed me into a place and I kind of finished up in a place and there were shower heads. And I started saying my prayers because I, we knew in the ghetto that the shower heads are false and there's guest comes out and, uh, and we are going to die. So I started saying my prayers before dying. And then water came out in my place. And then suddenly after they finished, they chased us to another barrack. They gave us prison clothes and then I thought my father must be alive too and I ran out and I started looking for my father because there was going to be a roll call and I looked, I looked, I looked and I couldn't find him. And then the next day I found out that my mother, my father and my sister were murdered by the Nazis and that was, it, 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 it almost I turned almost into a, a nothing. I felt that my life had no meaning, that I lost everything. And what kept me going was, I believe, that providence kept me going. And it was, by my fa I, I, I a great believe, you know, I, when I see my father, he was like an angel with wings. And I kept on he, remembering that, that he was the one who, 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 who kept me. That, that what sustained me. That what kept me going. Number one, being numb and make myself invisible. That was the most important. You had to make yourself invisible. For the next 10 years, I never ever thought about the Holocaust. My brain did something that it made me not think about anything. I didn't think about my family. I didn't think about anything. I, I lived again. I lived in that moment. It, it, of course, it, 10 years later, I started suffering very badly. And for years and years and years, I suffered. And it was Dorothy, my wife, that she kept me alive. She's the one who saved me. I am alive today because she looked after our children. She helped me, uh, you know, when I was screaming at night and I had to, I was very poor. I had to work every day to bring food on the table. We've been married now for, for since 1957 and, and we still love each other as much as before. And it was thanks to her that I actually survived and that my kids are okay. They, they didn't, I didn't tell them everything. The Holocaust is right inside you. You, you can't run away from it. It's part of you. It's going to be with you until the day you die. And if you have a soul and the soul goes to heaven or wherever it goes, I mean, that soul is still going to remember the Holocaust. So there's no running away from it. And I would like to hand this message over to the world. I have a torch which I want to give, which I give to the children and I want to give to the world. And my torch has got more than one flame. It's got many flames. And to give you just an example of some of them, my torch has got no racial discrimination, no religious discrimination, no homophobia, no xenophobia, and above all, no hate. Hate is vicious. Hate is pernicious. Hate creates vengeance. Hate is something that should take, disappear from the world because it brings about vengeance. And this is the flame. Please take those flames and make them flame and make the world a much better place than it is at the moment. And the only way to do it is if everybody would get together and make the world shine 
and bright and spread the flame of goodwill. Please, thank you very much.